Hello friends, how's it going? Rockley Smile here as always. Today, we're going to be playing some Downwell. This is the new little game that I've become very enamored with. It's very simple lo-fi aesthetically, uh, but it's also quite rich and deep strategically. And I played about three hours of this on stream last night and had a blast with it, and I thought, well, I do a lot of these recurring sort of on and off series where I play a roguelike game for a while and then I kind of take a break and do something else and then come back to it. And I feel like this is one of those games that would be well suited to be in that... Uh, endeavor. So, why don't we jump right into it? I will explain what there is to explain as we play. Uh, like I said, I've got three hours into this, so I actually do understand the conventions pretty well, which is not uh, pretty well. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, it's not the way I usually do things, but in this case, I think it should still be entertaining regardless. Uh, that's the hope anyway. So, why don't we jump in? All right, first things first, we're going to explain some things about how this game works. There are styles that will augment our gameplay a little bit. For now, since we're just starting up, we're going to go with standard, but I do have all the other ones unlocked already from my prior session. Uh, the unlock curve in this game is satisfying, and there's actually sort of a meta thing, sort of like Rogue Legacy, where you collect gems, and as you collect gems, they will be banked, no matter if you spend them in the in-game currency system or not. Uh, whereas after you finish a run, it will add up and unlock things. Uh, either these styles or color schemes for the game uh, will be unlocked. But again, we'll get into some of this later. Let's just pick standard, where nothing is changed and nothing is augmented, and I will begin to uh, show you what's up. Alright, so here's a little Potato Man character. He's got only a handful of things that he can do. Uh, one of them is jump, one of them is shoot which is our uh, jump button again when we're in the air. And you'll see we have bullets over on the right side. Uh, there are a number of different gun power-ups that we can get that will change what our charges are represented by. And then you'll see that red uh, image inside of that block over there. If we break that open, it's going to have a 10 gem inside of it. And then we get a little one from that little drop. Um, so the goal here is collect as many gems as you can, try and live as long as you can and get as far down as you can. Uh, we'll also try to chain combos as often as possible. Now you can one-shot nearly every enemy in the game by stomping on its head, and the goal is to try and create really long combos of being able to do that without touching ground. Now your bullets also get reset every time you uh, crush an enemy with your feet, so there's a number of ways to make things happen, and you'll see also these sweet little warp time portals in the walls there, which will allow us to pop into other rooms, grab a bunch of extra gems, and hopefully make out like a bandit when it comes to our currency. Uh, so again, like I said, we want to unlock things as well as just have the option to buy things in the game. Now, it, in general, the game is very fast-paced. I'm showing you rather slowly how things look uh, for the time being, but once we get into a sort of a flow state, uh, that will not be the case as much. We'll just be going down and down and down as quickly as we can, uh, trying to mitigate any enemies that want to follow us. Uh, well, sometimes. Other times you just leave them alone and keep running. But it's an amazing feeling once you start to get really in the groove for what you're trying to do. Uh, it really does feel very satisfying, and there are some weapons that will actually make you feel even better. So this is a weapon upgrade right here. Uh, these give you 1 HP if you were missing one, but it doesn't extend your maximum HP, and it also gives you, obviously, the weapon effect. In this case, we've got Burst, which does like a three-round fire for each one of those charges that you'll see uh, represented by Nuggets on the right. Uh, there's also a thing called Gem High, which will result from collecting gems in a combo. That one, I'm still not entirely clear how that works, but there are items uh, that will get sort of Nuclear Throne style between uh, areas, and you'll see one of those right now. And there's one that will actually upgrade that. I'm not really sure, again, what that's going to do for us, but this is that, uh, that item right there showed up immediately. So Gem High lasts for longer duration. We can get hot casing for bullet casings deal damage, or popping gems for getting gems cause a bullet to shoot up. Um, these are both quite useful, uh, depending on what items you're using, like for a weapon, you might want one that uh, caters more to this. If you have a machine gun, you're going to be dropping more shell casings, therefore more damage potential, which is good. Uh, where in this case, we're definitely going to be picking up gems no matter what I do, so we're going to probably just grab this one for now. And, well, we'll probably get a better weapon soon enough. So the way that the game is structured and broken up is there's floors, sort of like in Isaac. I believe the first set is just two, uh, and then we get to the catacombs or something like that. Uh, sort of a halloween -y looking area filled with skeletons and spooks and horrors. And that one is three floors deep, or three uh, levels deep, I guess you could say. Uh, then there's one after that, I think, again, is three... 
uh, and so on and so forth. And there, each one has its own set of enemies and items or uh, things you can encounter. Tiles, I should say, not items. Um, and so this is our shop. This is what we want to spend our precious gems on. We can buy charges here, 150 for one charge. We can get an energy drink for heal for one and a charge. I think that's probably the ideal thing to do there. Get the charge, get the HP, we're back at full. Uh, you can also get extra charges and HP by getting really high combos, something like 25 I think is required. And it's not necessarily very easy to pull that off for me yet, but maybe at some point that will become second nature. I can only hope. But I'm just doing my best to survive as long as possible. I should probably show you my stats at one point, since you can see uh, where I'm at on that, but my highest progression was 4-1 for a level. And, uh, well, if you see the different styles also, the different ways that you can augment your character when you choose at the start, there's some that seem to cater more to building combo-heavy runs, and others that are maybe more uh, favoring just sort of traditional play where you kind of jump on stuff occasionally, but usually shoot stuff. Um, and if you do it really well, what you want to have happen is you kind of do that for a while, only don't get hit at the end, uh, where you use your bullets to not just hit enemies, but often to uh, float. And I, I believe there's probably going to be a point where people are going to get upset if I don't play the right way, and, you know, that just seems to happen with everything. But I am doing my best, and I'm not going to apologize, because I think I'm actually better than average at this. Within my first three runs or so, I was actually able to get to... Um, what was it? The third zone, which I think is decent. All right, so what do we have this time? Lift off, rocket jump. I'm not a huge fan of that one. It causes a little explosion at your feet every time you jump, which I suppose there's reasons you'd want that, but I think it actually deletes blocks I don't want most of the time, or I don't want to blow up yet. And I have total control over when I'm breaking blocks, so I think I'll just leave that for now. Uh, blocks will shoot out bullets when destroyed, or a drone which shoots uh, when you shoot. I was told that it shoots the same material that you shoot or the same power-up that you shoot, but I don't think that's actually true. I think it's just a regular bullet. So I'm going to go with the blocks will shoot out bullets when destroyed, and then we'll hopefully kind of create a very bullet-heavy run on this one. I mean, the runs tend to diverge a little bit. They're not quite as drastic as something like Isaac, uh, but there's enough differentiation that it's still satisfying, and there are still different paths that you can take that seem to uh, favor certain types of play. So we've got a T on this one. This is triple. This is probably one of my favorite uh, gun power-ups, and especially when... Oh, that was so dumb. When I have enough charges to really make good use of it, I think that I can get some good work done here. And this might be a gun power-up that I actually hold on to for most of the run, provided I don't have to end up taking a different one. And the reason I say that is because sometimes I end up getting really low on HP, and the only answer to get more HP is that I may have to pick up a different gun power-up. Or maybe I'll just die before I even get to the next one, which is also quite possible. Uh, my apologies if that does happen. We are on the third floor, aren't we? So maybe I was wrong. Maybe it is three on all of the floors. And I just forgot. Oh, oh, careful. Okay, don't hit the bat. I'll just grab those gems real quick. Um, see, this is that exact situation where I, I just really want the HP, so I'm going to take machine gun... Uh, which is good for bullet casings, if I wanted to drop lots of those, but like I said, I, uh, I passed up on the bullet casings option earlier. So you gotta stomp on turtles. Red things are things that you can't stomp on, or they hurt you. Uh, things with white on the top. It's, it's a great color coding system, actually. You'll intuitively understand it, probably without even having to tell yourself anything about it. Um, although, you know, sometimes you do need to hear that stuff out loud. But uh, there's actually a number of ways that you can kind of mix up... Oh, see, there's that item again. Um, there's ways you can mix up the color palette, which if you're like an advanced player, if you understand what the enemies do intrinsically, then you can kind of mess with it, have fun with it. Um, so hot casing for bullet casing deal damage, laser sight increases range, increases accuracy, or reverse engineering to shoot a gun module to reshuffle it once. So it's basically like a reroll option. I'm going to take hot casing. None of those give me HP right away, so we're just doing like all the damage. Right now, this is... So, we're on Catacomb 1. I guess easy enough to remember, since it sort of parallels Isaac a little bit. And so we've got a new set of enemies here, as well as some older ones that are hanging out. We've also got some traps now. As you can see, some spikes are going to shoot out, if we're not careful here. And I've got to really make sure that I get right where I need to go. 
Cause, oh no, the shop, I wanted the shop and I didn't get to it. That would have been my out because I had enough to buy a 2 HP. All right, that sucks, bad run. Uh, but we did get some progress, as we always do. Like I said, there's a Rogue Legacy sort of meta-progression element to this. All of the gems that we accumulated on this run, whether we spent them or not, get added to this total number, uh, which again unlocks both styles and also palette combinations. So let's just retry. After playing a lot of this, well, I guess I couldn't say a lot of this, but quite a bit of this, um, the standard style is not really my favorite anymore. There's one that makes you uh, a little bit lighter, so you float more between landing. And there's also one called, I think it's Cannonball, that makes you fall really hard and gives you more health at the expense of having more options to pick from at the end of each floor. Um, and I quite like both of those for different reasons. If I want to play one that's a little bit more uh, reckless, then I'll tend to go Cannonball. If I want to play one that's maybe more combo-oriented, then I'll play the Levitate one. And I'll show you what those are about later. I just, for now, I think we should just start off with the standard foundation. Because I have a feeling if I get into a flow state again playing this, it will be very easy for me to forget how much time has passed. You would think with such a simple game that three hours going by, like, it would get tedious. I didn't really find that to be the case most of the time. Uh, the only thing that I maybe did find was I, I got a little bit burned out of, like, my ability to play at the speed that it wants me to play. I mean, you don't have to go super fast if you don't want to, except for one floor for a reason. Uh, or, I don't know, maybe there's more floors that do that later, but I haven't gotten to them. Um, you can play at your own pace, is what I'm trying to say, and I, I value that, but it feels really good when you go fast. So, that's what I'll probably do most of the time. Alright, so reverse engineering, we saw that one already. Candle, for longer state of invincibility when taking damage, or youth, more upgrades to choose from and gain 1 HP. What would be really great is if this extended your max HP when you're at 4 out of 4 uh, health. Since it doesn't, though, it sort of devalues that upgrade a little bit. So what it does, then, is gives me another of these three options. It gives me a fourth option to choose from, which is useful. I mean, having more choices there is always good. Uh, but I think I'm going to go with Candle for now. Leveraging that I have 4 HP, I'm probably going to take a hit fairly soon. Using that fact, I will probably not take another hit right away, but then again, I'm still at the beginning, so the odds of me taking a hit here, uh, or many hits in a row, are, I guess, not hugely high. Still, thinking into the future, it's useful to get that stuff out of the way early, and then you'll probably be able to use it later on, uh, where you'll hopefully have a bit more HP to go from anyway. Uh, and in case I haven't made it abundantly clear yet, and I, I don't know that I have, uh, these levels are all randomly generated every time you play it, you will run into different orders of enemies and different weapon power-ups at different times and all of that. Uh, it's different enough that it's never felt like the same floor, but then again, everything is kind of minimalistic too. So, yeah, we'll just get the heal. Should probably get gotten a charge as well. Um, there's so little at play, really. Like, it, you get used to the sets of enemies, and you get used to the sets of... How progression feels, and then it, it, you know, the randomization doesn't really come into uh, as much of a factor as it might in some games. Because you're just always going down, like, there's not really much else to do with it. But despite it feeling like it could be really obviously tedious, again, like I said before, uh, it really doesn't. I mean, it, it kind of has this feeling of, like, a fast-paced Metroid or something like that, where you're just going down the corridor section. This is laser, which is fantastic, it's got a penetrative shot to it. The uh, downside, of course, being that I only get three bursts. So if I'm trying to coast on this and I'm trying to stay up in the air, I'm not going to have as much functionality on that, unfortunately. So yeah, I've got to balance bouncing off of enemies and shooting them in a reasonable way. And watching out for frogs also is a priority of mine. All right, cool. Not a terrible floor. We ended up leaving with four out of four on our health. Um, now I can take rocket jump, which again, I've said I'm not a huge fan of. Bullet casings deal damage, I only have three charges per uh, clip, I guess you could call it. So that's not as useful as in some. And laser sight increases range, increases accuracy. I have perfect accuracy with the laser, and my range is infinite, so this is actually useless for this weapon. Uh, but obviously this power-up would prevail, even if I changed weapons to another one. I'll go with the bullet casings deal damage. It's sort of just making the best out of a bad situation for an immediate benefit. But sometimes you have to weigh, you know, an immediate benefit versus a long-term benefit, and I don't know that that was necessarily the best choice. 
You know, I, I doubt that Laser Sight would have been, though, so I don't know. It's a bit of a tough call on that one. Uh, I would love some charges here, and for only 150, I will buy one. It's not enough to get me to another round, uh, but it is, again, useful for other weapons, too. And uh, in case you were wondering why I'm not doing wall jumps and stuff, it's not always the most convenient thing to do. You can't really go back up very far, but just to show you, it sort of works like Super Metroid, where you have to have a somersault jump for the the wall jump to work properly. So you can see I'm jumping, I have a somersault there, and it works when I do that, versus when I don't, no wall jump, I just shoot. Also, I just want to call out brilliant design when I see it. The fact that you walk out of this and there's a time vortex where everything stops and you can take a moment and gather your thoughts before you jump back into the high-speed action is uh, really a really wise decision to have made, and one that I think many people would have just gone right by on. So, props there. Also, having a very simple color scheme to go from uh, makes the game a lot more accessible in that realm as well. You can very quickly see what you're trying to do. It leads to a visual language that is very parsable very very instantaneously, which is absolutely necessary in this. It's sort of taken a page out of Mirror's Edge in that respect, where we've got one color that highlights things, and it has actually multiple meanings depending on what you're trying to do. I'm wasting a lot of gems there, which is not ideal. Um, I guess we'll take the T for triple, because I want the health, and also I really like that item. And now we've got a few more charges, so we can hopefully play with that a bit more. Uh, I don't like how I handled that situation. I missed a lot of gems there. I'm really not stomping on a lot of enemies for combos, which is lame. But trust me, I will make that a priority. Um, in fact, I, well, so I went through a bit of a progression when I was playing this the other night, where at first I was just trying to stay alive, then I was trying to shoot as many things as possible, then I was trying to stomp as many things as possible, and the uh, part where I was shooting as many things as possible was where I did the best. But I think once I have sort of more muscle memory with this game, I should be able to do both. Okay, I wanted to grab those two big gems as I fell through. Alright, what do we have this time? Gem sick again, time out, creates a time void when damaged, or heart balloon for a pretty balloon. Not entirely sure what the balloon does. It floats over your head and you'll carry it with you through the level. It maybe pops and hurts things or something, but I'm not entirely sure. So I'm going to take time out. Another good reason to take time out, actually, is when you get hurt... It actually gives you a moment to kind of recapture what you're trying to do, which can be quite beneficial, actually, when everything gets very, very hectic and chaotic and fast. Uh, also, if there's, like, a ton of projectiles or things moving around, like that situation right here, I can stop and just go, all right, what's up? What do I need to do now? So, it's a useful power-up. It's not my favorite or anything. I don't want to take it most of the time, but when it's there and there's not a lot of better options, it's not bad then. That doesn't paint a very good picture for it, does it? Alright, so I'm taking a lot of bad damage. Um, I need some health very soon, and I'm hoping this room will take care of that. We got Noppy, which is a steerable machine gun. Since we've got the bullet casings doing damage, this is actually pretty beneficial for us. And, well, I wanted the extra health anyway. So let's try and stomp some stuff and use this for uh, hovering as much as possible. I should call out as well, in case I haven't already, I don't think I have, uh, the music in this game is really good. The whole whole ambience of the whole thing is just really fantastic, and it feels like such a great callback to the NES games in that time in general. Um, even though this is maybe even a bit more minimalist, it kind of feels like a Game Boy Color game or something of that ilk. Uh, but it's still, it's, it's just so playable and fantastic. Uh, and it all just feels like such a good, cohesive, well-thought-out package. Altogether, I, I really, I can hardly recommend this game enough. It's so good. Um, so we can take youth for the extra HP. I might do that. Gem powered, getting gems, recharges, gun boots. That's really good too. Rest in peace, shooting dead bodies, cause them to explode. So actually three pretty good options here. Gem powered is probably the one I'd want in case I end up with shotgun or laser again. That way I can still charge while I'm falling. Um, and the, the extra one HP might be great there too, but I'm going to take gem powered. It may mean that I get to shoot, like, a lot, a lot with this particular gun. Uh, especially if I'm careful about it. Oh, I forgot that I transitioned over from Noppy to... Try Shot again. Alright, that's good. That's even better. This is actually not bad for hovering either. So, I'm pretty happy with it. And the longer I can hold on to... Oh, Angry Skulls. 
The longer I can hold on to the three-way shot, the better I'll be. Um, oh, I guess I couldn't stomp that guy. That's my bad. Um, we're at two out of four. We should be up for a shop fairly soon. And we're doing really well for gems. There we go. Yeah, let's buy some stuff. Heals one and a charge for 600. Yes, I will buy that, and I will also buy this. Back at full health, got another charge, feeling good. Let's not get ghosted, if possible. Alright. Skulls we gotta be careful of. Some of them seem to transform into red ones. Maybe it's just when you shoot them, actually. Pretty sure that's the case. Oh, bad damage there. Okay, well that's fine. We get some extra gems in this room. By the way, there is, uh, a, like, the door actually works for gems, too. If they fly out the door, they will actually go out here. Uh, but it's not a big deal, because you usually can just grab them. And, alright, we made it. Very nice. Two of two cleared. So what do we have here? Rest in Pieces again, which is the one I was saying I might want before. Blast Module is really good. I'll probably take that, and I don't really like Rocket Jump. So, yeah, let's take Blast Module. Every time I jump, it makes a... Very impactful feel- I'm sorry, when I land on an enemy, rather, it makes a very impactful stomp, which I quite value a lot. And it shoots downward a little bit, too. So, you can actually end up getting some, uh, collateral damage just by virtue of your placement. Oh my god, there's too many things happening. So much of this game is just being able to read what's in front of you very, very quickly and effectively. And, oh, I thought I was dead. I'm not dead yet. Okay, make it into the shop, or the, the room. Okay, that doesn't have a weapon power-up, so that sucks. Alright, I just got a coast here. Hope for the best. Um, what do I want to do? Let's let this... Maybe let the ghost get a little closer. Oh, God. I can't believe I lived there. This is risky. Really risky. Oh god, I angered the skull, and I'm dead. The Time Vortex actually seems to kill enemies as well, and we got another unlock. We got Pallet Unlocked Bok Bokju. Alright, that's cool. Uh, they actually have quite a few pallets to this. I don't know if I should show them all to you, because it's kind of spoilery, but I will probably show you the others eventually. Um, I guess we'll just keep the first episode fairly short. A couple of runs, 20-ish minutes is fair enough, I think. If you have a really good run... Sometimes it's like maybe 15 minutes for one, I guess. Um, I haven't actually gotten so far that it's been like prohibitive-wise, time-wise, prohibitively time-wise. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, but it's, uh, it's so satisfying that it's so easy to just keep resetting and resetting and resetting. And before you know it, a ton of time has passed. Uh, anyway, that was my little intro for Downwell. I'll be playing a bunch of this over the course of time. Obviously, there's going to be other series popping up. With Isaac coming out tomorrow, or the, the new expansion, I should say, uh, Afterbirth. So I can't say that this will be up with increasing regularity. This won't be a daily series, but I will definitely have the urge to be playing more and more of this. And see, my hands have already started playing, and I'm not even, not even intending to do a run on this one. It's just happening whether I like it or not. Uh, but I will definitely be prioritizing going for... Uh, combos at some point because again it feels fantastic just the game feel of this in general is so so good um, so I will urge you if you found any interest in this whatsoever go ahead and go to the link that I'm gonna provide and uh, go give it a buy the thing is like three dollars it's not even expensive and it's so so good and I just got an achievement for not going into a uh, side room which is a thing that I could have done easily anytime and just forgot to do it uh, and there's knife and fork which is actually pretty useful uh, item upgrade. Yeah, go give it a buy. It soundtrack's really good as well. Um, I don't know what else to say other than I love this game and I wholly recommend it to you. Uh, link is in the description. Anyway, I will talk to you next time. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. I hope you have a fantastic night. Later, everybody.